In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a tune style shader in Blender. So as you can see here, I've just created this simple 3D scene with a snowman and a cabin and some mountains, and then there's some grass on the ground with snow. But when I go into the rendered mode, you can see that everything has a cartoon style shader. And what's really cool about this tune shader is that it actually interacts with the light. So you can say I have this sunlight right here. If I rotate the sunlight, you can see that the shader is actually interacting with the light. So I could make it kind of look like evening and you can see that now there's going to be a bunch of big shadows or I could rotate the sun pointing straight down and now it kind of looks like midday or noon and this tune shader only works for the EV render engine so if you use cycles it's not going to work so just make sure you're using EV in this tutorial now if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel you can purchase this 3d scene right here on my Gumroad store and also it will be available on my patreon page so if you'd like to check that out I'll have the links in the description and then also before we start, I want to give a huge thanks to Sketchfab for sponsoring this video. Upload and preview your own 3D models on Sketchfab. My favorite feature of Sketchfab is that you can preview 3D models online in your browser. You can also purchase models and assets from Sketchfab's model store. You can use the model inspector to preview the wireframe, matte cap, textures, and more before you purchase. You can also apply to sell your own 3D models. Check out Sketchfab with the link below. So what I've done is I've deleted all of the shaders in the scene and then one by one I'll add them in and show you how I create them. Now again, it is really important that you use the EV render engine because um, this shader setup will not work in the cycles render engine. So make sure you're using EV. So I have the 3D view right over here and then I have Blender's shader nodes right here. So I'm just gonna first select the ground right here and I'm gonna click on new and I'm just gonna call this snow. And then before we start doing the node setup, I will be using the node wrangler add-on. So if you don't have that enabled you can just click on edit and then go to the preferences and then if you click on the add-ons tab you can go over to the search and start to type in node wrangler and just turn on the node wrangler add-on and i'll show you how to use it in the video all right so to create the base of this tune shader what i'm going to do is i'm going to press shift a and i'm going to search for a shader to rgb so just click on the shader to rgb and we're going to drop it down here now if you zoom in here and look at these different objects you can see that some parts are white because i haven't added a color to them and then some parts have shadows and that is because I added this sun lamp so if you haven't added a sun lamp yet in this scene then I would definitely recommend doing that so you can press shift a and you can go right down here and you can go under light and then you can add a sunlight so I just added a sunlight and I just rotate the sunlight kind of over here on the side and then if you click right over here on the light settings I just turned this up to about an 8 and I just left it as a white color so back over here to the snow what we can do is we can actually use this shadow data and we can turn it to color data so right now now it is just acting as a material but if we take this shader to RGB and we put this in between it's going to take the shader data and it's going to turn it into color data so now this is as if it's a color map instead so now what I can do is I can just edit these colors and make it look like a cartoon or tune shader so to do that I'm gonna press shift a and I'm going to search for a color ramp let's click on the color ramp and we can just drop it right down here so now what it's doing is it's taking this data here and it's just making it black and white um, but it's already black and white because we didn't add any color but now if you start to drag this out you can see it's making it more contrasty now if you hold down the control and shift key and click on the color ramp that is going to use the node wrangler add-on and it's going to add the viewer node and it's going to preview different nodes and you can see that it looks just like the normal principal shader and that is because we haven't actually really done anything to it but if I now just add colors in here like let me click on this plus here and then I can just like make this a different color you can see that it's now actually changing that color there because this is no longer shaded data it is now color data so I'm just going to select this and click on the minus here to get rid of it because we don't need that so to now make this look like snow I want to click on this black tab right here and I'm going to click down here on the color and I want to make this a bit brighter so I'm going to make it pretty bright and then I want to make it blue and this way the shadows are now going to look blue and that looks a lot like snow so I'm going to make it a bit more saturated of a blue color and then I'll make it a little bit darker and then one other really important thing to make it look like a tune shader I want to click right over here on this link Linear on the color ramp and I want to change it to consistent and now you can see that these shadows here are a bit more sharp 
because this is now consistent so it's not blending in between the colors it's just going from one color to another and that looks much more like a tune shader now I want to add this material to some other objects so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll over here scroll over to the snow and I'm gonna click and drag and I'm gonna drop this material on these other objects so I'm gonna drag it onto this snowman here and then I'll also just drag them onto the mountains for now so I'm gonna click and drag and drop them onto the mountains back here and now you can really see what this is doing so back here on the color ramp if I change the consistent back to linear you can see that the transition is very smooth and that really doesn't look like a cartoony shader it looks just like a 3d shader but if I click on the linear and change it to consistent you can now see that it looks much more like a tune shader and what I can do is I can take this white tab and I can drag it and then that is going to change how much of the color is actually shown so already this is looking really quite cool um, but I do want to have two different colors because I do want to have some sort of change in the shading so what I'm going to do is click on the white tab and I'm going to drag it back over here and then I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to click to add a tab right here so I can now just change the color of this tab so I'm going to click on this color right here and I'm going to make it a bit brighter and a bit more white so now you can see that is really starting to look like snow so it has the bright part right here and then it kind of gets a little bit darker and then it kind of gets darker here in the shadows now what's really cool about this is if you select your sunlight and rotate it you can see that it's actually going to affect those shadows now why this is happening is because we're using the shader data first but then we're converting that to black and white data and that way the light and shadow is actually going to affect the final material so it's really as simple as that. You just take a principal shader, you convert it to black and white, and then you change the different colors to the colors that you want. So in this case, I'm creating snow, so I want it to kind of be white and blue colors, but you could change these colors depending on your object. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I do a few different things, because like these mountains here, I want them to be a bit brown. And then also over here on the wood cabin, I wanna add a little bit of a wood texture in that tune shader as well. So I'll show you now how I would change this for different types of objects. Objects. Now there is one other thing you could do for this snow material and that is you could give it a little bit more bump because snow is a little bit bumpy especially for the snow here on the snowman. The snowman is going to be packed together with snow so it's going to be a little bit bumpy and lumpy. Now you can see that the snowman already does have a little bit of bumps here and that is because if I go back to the layout here you can see that this object is actually a little bit bumpy and that is because right over here on the modifiers I gave it a subdivision surface so that it has more geometry and then I gave it a display displacement modifier. So I gave it the displace modifier and then if I click right over here I gave it a clouds texture and so that way it's just a little bit bumpy. So you can see if I turn the strength up you can see what it's doing. So the cloud texture right here is actually displacing the mesh and so it's affecting that and making it look a little bit lumpy. So you could just do that but if you want to do it in the shader I'm just going to hop back over here to the shading tab. What I can do if I go back into rendered mode is I can press shift a and I can just search here for a noise texture and I can just drop this noise texture right down here and then using the feature from the node wrangler with this noise texture selected I can press Control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping and then I don't actually need the mapping so I'll select it and press X to delete it and I want to plug the object into the vector because if we control shift and click on the noise texture to preview it this texture coordinate plugging the object into the vector is going to place the noise texture on the object more evenly so I'm going to put that object onto the vector and then what I can do is I can actually use this data here and affect the normal so I'm going to take the factor and I'm going to plug that into the normal and then let's go back over here and control shift and click on the color ramp. Now there is a problem here and that is because we need to convert this to a normal data because this is black and white data but this needs to be normal data or bump data. So to convert this I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to search for a bump node and let's drop the bump node right in here between the noise and the principled and then I actually want to put the factor into the height. All right, and now you can see what it's doing. So if I control shift and click on the principal BSDF to preview it, because this noise texture is affecting the bump, it's going to look all bumpy. You can see right there, it has all these bumps. So there's a few things that I can do to make this look a bit more like snow. I want to turn the scale down on the noise texture, and that way the bumps will be a bit bigger. And then also the strength is way too big. It looks really bumpy. So I'm going to turn this strength value right here on the bump. I'm going to turn it way down to like a 0.1 or maybe like a 0 0.15, 0 0.15, just so that it's very 
very subtle, but you can still see it. So you can see it just is giving a little bit of bump there on that snow. So now if I control shift and click back on the final material, just control shift and click back on the color ramp, you can see that that snow is looking a little bit bumpy now. And if you turn the strength up, you can see it's taking effect. So if you want it to be really bumpy, you could turn that up, but I don't really like that. I just like to have it down more at like a 0.1 or a 0.2, um, but it does look a little bit bumpy now and it looks like hard pack snow. All right, so now let's do the grass. So I'm gonna select the grass and then I'm going to go into the camera view just so that I can see that. So I'm gonna click on new here and I can just call this grass. So for this, we're gonna do pretty much the same exact thing. So I'm gonna press shift A and I'm going to search for a shader to RGB. So we're gonna drop the shader to RGB right there. And now I just need to change the colors. So to change the colors, I'm gonna press shift A and I'm gonna search for a color ramp and let's just drop the color ramp right in here. So I can now take this white tab right here and I can make this a green color and just maybe make it a little bit darker. And then I can take this black color right here and I can make it a dark green color. So I'm gonna make it green and then I'm gonna make it very dark. And then again, to make it look more like a cartoon shader, I'm gonna click on the linear and I'm gonna change it to consistent so it's a bit sharper. And then this dark green right here, I think I'll make this a little bit brighter. So that is much better. So there we go, now we have some stylized grass. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how I create a stylized cartoon fabric material. So I'm gonna select this hat right here and I'm gonna click on new. And then I'm also gonna click on his scarf right here and I'll click on the drop down, and then I can add the fabric material. All right, so we're gonna start by doing the same exact thing. So I'm gonna press shift A and we're going to add a shader to RGB, drop that in there. Then I can press shift A again and we're gonna add a color ramp we're gonna drop the color ramp right in there. And then from linear, I wanna change this to consistent. All right, now I want this to be a red fabric. So on the black here, I'm gonna make this a bit brighter and I'm gonna make it a very bright red, um, but I will make it a li little bit darker because this is going to be the shadow of the fabric. And then on this white tab right here, I can click on the white color and I'm gonna make this a very bright red, although I don't want it to be super saturated because it kind of looks a little bit weird if it's too saturated and a little bit darker. So now we have that red stylized material, but I wanna make it look more like fabric. So we can actually add textures into this stylized material. So I'm gonna press Shift A, and I'm going to search here for a wave texture. Let's just drop the wave texture right here. So now if you control Shift and click on the wave texture, you can see what it's doing. Now I'm gonna turn the scale of the wave texture up quite a bit so you can see a lot more of those waves. And then you could also change the rotation of the waves. So right here you can change it from X or Y or Z. In this case, I think diagonal actually looks pretty good. I kinda of like that. Um, but you could change this to whatever you want. I'm gonna change it to diagonal. So now what I can do is I can take this color and I can put that into the base color. So now we're actually using this wave texture as the base color. So if I control shift and click back on the color ramp to preview the final thing, and you can see that now it actually has kind of a stylized texture on that fabric. And again, on this color ramp, you could drag out this lighter red if you wanted to change how much shadow there is. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how I create the shiny eyes. So I'm gonna click on new right here and I'm gonna call this eyes because this is the snowman's eyes. So again, I'm gonna press shift A. We're gonna search for a shader to RGB. And then again, shift A and I'm gonna search for a color ramp and we'll drop that right in there. And then again, let's take the linear and we're gonna change that to consistent. And then I can also put the eye material on this other eye as well. Now to make this look like a shiny eye with a highlight, I'm gonna go right over here to the principal and I'm gonna make this very dark. So I'm gonna make it black. And then what I can do is I can start to drag this out. And when I do that, now you can see there's just a little highlight there on the top of the eye. And now it just kind of looks like a shiny eye with a little highlight. So that's what I did for the snowman's eyes. All right, so now I'll show you how I did the sticks for the snowman. So I'm gonna select the stick here and I'm gonna click on new and I can just call this like stick. And then again, it's the same technique. So I'll press shift A. I'm gonna add a shader to RGB. Shift A again, we're gonna add a color ramp drop that in there. And then I want this color ramp to be set to consistent instead of linear. Now for this, I thought it would be cool if there were a few different shades of brown. So on this white tab here, I'm gonna start by making this a light brown, something like that. Then for this dark one here, this is gonna be the shadow. So I'm gonna make it a much darker brown. And then right in the middle here, I do want there to be a lighter brown kind of in the middle. So I'm gonna hold down the control key and then I'm gonna click right there. And that's gonna add a, another tab. And then this one, I can make a little bit brighter. And then if you 
kind of drag this out, you can make it a bit thicker. So now if you zoom in there, let me just zoom in here, you can see that there's the lighter brown, then there's the darker brown, and then there's just a little bit in between. Um, and you can just play around with this to change the size of it, but I don't want to pull it too much out or it's going to get rid of the shadow there. Um, so there we go. That is what I did for the sticks. All right. So this is a really cool one. I'm going to show you how to create kind of a stylized wood. So I'm going to click on new here on this cabin, and I'm just going to change this to wood. And then I want to just click and drag and I want to drop the wood onto all of the other objects. So I'll just click and drag and drop it onto those other pieces. And then we're going to do the same exact thing. So we're going to add a shader to RGB, and then we're also going to add a color ramp. And then again, let's change the linear to consistent. All right, now just like the wooden sticks that were coming out of the snowman, I want to make this some brown colors. So on the white here, I'm going to make this a light brown. And then this black one here, I'm going to make this one a dark brown. And then I do want to add one more shade of brown kind of in the middle. So I'm going to hold down the control key and click and place it about there. And then I can make this brown a little bit lighter. So I'll make that a little bit lighter and that is looking pretty nice. All right, so we now have a nice basic wood shader, but you can see that the shading is very straight and I want to actually make it look a little bit like a wood texture. So to do that, I'm gonna press Shift A and I'm going to search for a noise texture and let's just drop the noise texture right here. And then if I select the noise texture, I can press Control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And then just like we did before, I wanna use the object. So I'm gonna plug the object into the vector and that way the noise texture will be placed around the objects more evenly. So let's control shift and click on this noise texture to preview it. We can see what it's doing. So I want to turn this detail here all the way up to the max, which is 15. So it has more detail. And then I also want to turn the scale down quite a bit. Um, so it's a bit smaller. So I'll turn that scale down quite a bit to maybe just like a one. So I can now take this noise texture and I can plug the factor into the base color and then let's control shift and click on the color ramp. So you can see it's doing something and it definitely looks more like wood, um, but this doesn't look exactly like wood. So to make it look more like wood, what I want to do is I want to scale the noise texture out. So on the mapping right here, I'm going to take the Y scale and I'm going to start to scale that out. And now you can see that is definitely looking more like wood um, because the noise texture is being stretched along the object. Now, if you look right over here on the side, you can see that doesn't look very much like wood. Um, and that is because this is a separate object and it's rotated differently. So I'm going to duplicate the shader and then create a different shader for this wood. So I'm going to click right over here and that is going to duplicate the material, but keep the same data. So I'm going to now call this wood two. So on the Z rotation right here, I'm going to change this Z rotation to 90 and that is going to rotate it around. And then I also need to change the scale down. So I'm gonna change the Y scale right here on the mapping. I'm gonna turn that down quite a bit. Um, so it's much smaller like that. And then I'm gonna turn the Z one up. So I'm gonna turn this Z one up um, just like that. And there we go. So now we have a nice wood texture right there on the side of that object. Now for the door here, I don't really want to have the wood texture because the door is kind of flat, um, whereas these are like big planks of wood. So I'm going to select the door and then right over here, I'm going to duplicate this by clicking on this button. And instead of calling it wood, I can just call it door. And then I can simply take the noise texture and unplug it. And that way it's still going to use all of this data here, but it won't use the noise texture right there. And then the last thing that I'll create is the mountains. So I'm going to click on the mountains and I've already added the snow material to the mountains. So now what I'm going to do is click on this button and this is going to duplicate the material, but keep the same data. So I'll click on this button. Now, if you wanted to give the mountains a little bit more detail, you could use this noise texture. So you could just turn the scale way up and you can see it's now just going to add a nice texture in there on the mountains. And then right up here on the color ramp, I need to change these colors because I don't really want it to look like blue. Now I do want it to look like there are snow on these mountains, but I also want the mountains to look a little bit brown. So on these colors right here, I'm going to first click on this dark blue and I'm just going to change this to kind of a brown color and I'm going to make it a bit darker because this part is in shadow. Now for this one right here that's lighter blue, I'm going to make it a brown color as well, but it's going to be a little bit brighter. All right, and that is it. So that is how I created the tune shaders for this 3D scene. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. I hope this tutorial was helpful and thank you so much for watching. And again, if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel, you can purchase this finished blender file with the scene and the tune shaders and you can also get it on on my Patreon page. So I'll have links to this product on my Gumroad and Patreon, and that's a great way to help support me and this YouTube channel. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful, and I hope to see you in a future tutorial.